Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for uh, being here. A little bit different location with the uh, construction over at the Performing Arts Center, but uh, great to have a full house here. And for those that are looking at us from their desk and or home streaming, hi. Uh, but we're, we're going to try this with a live uh, stream as well, so we can use the technology to our benefit. Uh, this uh, kicks off uh, uh, really the academic year. We've been prepping for this for the last few weeks, of course, and in some regards uh, since last year. And uh, I know that I always need to start off with a happy new year. And that's what we have today. And uh, for us, it is about new beginnings. New beginnings for a, an academic year. Uh, new beginnings for students uh, that are newly arrived and are, uh, I think, might be a record class. Uh, Jody and, and company do a fantastic job, uh, I think, so. <laughs> So it is new beginnings, and for Marsha and me, it's the beginning of a new decade of service here, and uh, we couldn't have been in a better place uh, when uh, I took the stage uh, uh, in 06. And lots have happened uh, between then and now, and I uh, can tell you this, uh, I look forward to coming to work every single day. And it's, uh, isn't that a blessing? I, I really do. I hope everyone can feel that uh, when they come into uh, uh, their work, uh, being in the classroom or as one of our great uh, staff members. Uh, it is, it's just a phenomenal experience to be able to, to serve uh, with you. But I just wanted to uh, start off uh, with, with a uh, real happy, happy new year to all of you. So let me, uh, I'm going to go back and forth between my, my notes. Uh, and uh, of course, this uh, is in fact, uh, a tradition for us, uh, uh, I was reminiscing a little bit with Rachel and said, you know, uh, when I did this first one, this is now number 11, of course, um, we had everyone together uh, with uh, the students and faculty and staff all with one address. And I thought uh, after that that maybe we can focus in with students and staff uh, with this address, excuse me, with faculty and staff, and then later on really uh, a focus in on our students, and that seems to have been a good model for, for us to proceed with. Um, and I, I also want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for what you do day in and day out for our university. Thank you for what you do with and for our students. Whether they be undergraduate or graduate students, uh, they all had choices on where they might want to go to college, to a university. And I want to thank you for serving them as well as, as you do. Uh, and you have seen that term, Laker Effect, on the billboards uh, around uh, the state of Michigan. <clears throat> You've seen maybe in some of the uh, advertising in terms of marketing. I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, later in my, in my um, uh, time with you today. Uh, but uh, I've, I've seen them on Twitter. I've seen them on uh, uh, T-shirts. Uh, that Laker Effect, I think, is a powerful image and, and mantra. But what it really is, it's a, a matter of describing our reach. Uh, across uh, not just Allendale, but to the rest of the world. And so we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And I do know this, though, that our Laker effect is growing every single day. And I have a couple of uh, uh, stories. Let, let me start off with this. Um, I love to tell stories, and most of it is because whenever Marsh and I travel, uh, we kind of represent. You know, we have our GV uh, uh, golf shirt on or sweatshirt on. Well, in this case, we didn't have uh, either one on. But uh, a couple weeks ago, we were uh, visiting our family in Alaska. My son's an executive officer in the Coast Guard Cutter in Kodiak Island, which is in the Aleutian chain. So we went there at the uh, end of uh, July. And uh, Gregory uh, tells me that, uh, hey, uh, do you remember, uh, 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 was it Hall? I think it, his name was, uh, one of the basketball players. Do you remember his name? Uh, from the uh, Coast Guard Academy, Gregory's classmate. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was, a, there was a young man who was my son's classmate <laughs> who lived across the cul-de-sac uh, at the base where he was stationed. So uh, uh, Jeremy Hall. And Jeremy lives uh, across the way. You may want to go say hi to him because uh, 
he would come over to our quarters at the Coast Guard Academy uh, for football games and all. He and Greg were close friends. So this guy's about 6'5", and he was a good basketball player and, and a good friend of my son's, and so we got to know him. So I walk up across the uh, um, and uh, he You are. alumni all over the nation, including Alaska. But then uh, we're coming back from uh, Alaska and Marcia's striking up a conversation as she uh, is apt to do whenever we're traveling and uh, says uh, to this uh, gentleman, and where are you from and where are you going? Says, well, I'm from Louisiana and uh, I'm going back to Louisiana. And he says, to Marcia, and, we're, and I'm uh, back a little bit, and, and he says, and where are you from? He said, well, I'm from, uh, she says, I'm from Michigan. Really? Well, uh, my son just recently transferred from LSU to a, a, a school called Grand Valley. Do you know about it? <laughs> and so Marcia says, I think so. <laughs> and then uh, they, they continue the conversation, and Marcia says, well, why? did he decide to transfer from LSU to Grand Valley? So I'm gonna open it up, why? Anyone? Marcia? A girlfriend! <laughs> That's called the Laker effect. Well, let me uh, start off with a few introductions. Uh, first off, uh, Victor Cardenas is here. He's the Chair of Finance and, and um, Administration uh, Committee of the Board of Trustees and also an alum, so thank you for being here, sir. Uh, we have uh, members of um, my uh, President's uh, Cabinet here, too, and uh, there's members of the Faculty Senate, and Karen Gibson is here. Thank you, Karen, for, for being here with the Faculty Senate. And Ella, Ella Pitzmeyer, and student uh, Senate uh, representatives as well. And again, all of you being very special to us. And just let me uh, say that there's been some staff uh, transitions, so I'd like to recognize uh, a few as, as we do get started. Uh, first off, I want to recognize Jim Bachmeyer. Uh, Jim uh, has had a, a Two decades of service here, the one full tenure appointment as VP uh, for uh, Finance Administration decided that he wanted to uh, pioneer in a new leadership role uh, for the university as Associate VP for Student Initiatives. And uh, this will provide us a chance to really focus in on some uh, areas that I think will be able to make a difference uh, even more so in accordance with our strategic plan. So I thank Jim for that. If we can recognize Jim, please. And uh, that means uh, Scott needed to step up, and he did as uh, acting uh, uh, vice president for finance administration. So congratulations uh, uh, as we uh, look ahead. Well, this, uh, this year we did um, say some goodbyes, some, some great folks, and some hellos as well. Some of the goodbyes, but uh, definitely they will stay in touch because uh, I already have uh, received uh, some emails from some of our colleagues. Uh, Tim Selgo, our great director of athletics. Bart Merkel, uh, dean of students, still with us, of course. Elaine Collins, uh, dean of education, now president uh, of a, a college and actually merging two colleges in, in uh, Vermont. Lee Van Orsdell, she's not really gone yet, but uh, will be retiring at the end of this uh, calendar year, just recognizing her great leadership in libraries. And each of them served our university with uh, uh, distinction. So let's uh, thank them for their service as well. And then we uh, said hello, maybe to some folks that were here already, but uh, now taking a new leadership role. Uh, Carrie Becker, our new director of athletics. Eileen Sullivan, our new dean of uh, students. And uh, she is omnipresent. Uh, I, I love it. Uh, last night uh, we were doing a photo op uh, 
they're called selfies, uh, with our new students. And uh, there she was uh, with them. And uh, it's, it's going to be great to, to have her. Barry Campbell, a new uh, dean of the College of Education. So I welcome all of you to your new roles here at supporting Grand Valley State University. And finally, looking ahead, uh, we know that uh, this will be Gail Davis's uh, last year of our provost. I've been saying she is uh, going to do a victory lap this year. <laughs> and indeed, it should be just that. Uh, she's starting her 15th year. I couldn't have asked for a better partner and colleague and friend and mentor than uh, Gail Davis. She has been a remarkable individual for this institution. Uh, she has worked with uh, governance, uh, shared governance, and in many regards, creating the university that we see today and positioning us so well for the university of tomorrow. And she, uh, I know I'm going to miss her, but she is also going to be sticking around because I have a friend uh, with, with she and Fred. And uh, I, I am so pleased that uh, we had someone uh, really as the number two here on the campus that I could... Uh, always uh, uh, go to uh, for questions and counsel and advice. Uh, and in fact, I'll, I'll tell you this, there's no one I think could have had the level of integrity and commitment to this university than Gail Davis. A, um, a, as you know, you've been reading uh, GV Now, uh, that a search and screening committee has been uh, uh, selected, up and running. Uh, John Jelma and Terry Losey are going to lead that. And, and we're going to uh, keep all, all in the loop as this uh, uh, semester uh, winds up uh, with uh, hopefully uh, some great candidates. Not hopefully. I know that we're going to have some great candidates uh, that will want to serve uh, here at Grand Valley State University as the chief academic officer. So let me, uh, again, do this in two pieces. Uh, a little bit of a year in review, as I've done in the past, and then a little bit of a look ahead uh, in terms of this Laker effect, as, as I'm calling that. And I, of course, it's uh, impossible to mention all the good works that we do day in and day out, month after month after month over this past year and years. But let me just uh, cover a few highlights from my perspective and reflecting some of the great efforts uh, too through uh, the divisions and the colleges. Uh, first off, last year, of course, was a record-breaking uh, year for Grand Valley. Uh, our total enrollment remained uh, strong with 25,325. Uh, uh, 4,100 of those were first-time students. There was a record number of students of color on the campus at almost 4,000. Over 11, uh, over 15 percent international students was 434, and we had uh, over 6,000 students living on on the campus. But it's uh, too early, as as Chick would point out, uh, to count yet. But we will uh, five days after the start of classes, and we will know. Uh, but uh, I guess I, I could say that uh, again, as I reported out time and again, that uh, our enrollment will be stable. But I do think that uh, our uh, incoming freshman class is going to uh, uh, be, be strong. And let, let's just uh, leave it at that and we'll get more words. Uh, she's giving me a thumbs up you know, this way, enough. <laughs> um, and I, I'll tell you, th these numbers are, are really, really good to report. And I, th I think uh, it's because we continue to attract and retain good students. And, and that is both uh, at the undergraduate and graduate level. We attract and retain good students. And you know, we, we have num numbers of rankings and uh, accolades, as Matt McLogan would say, and recognitions. I was really pleased in January by one of those, and that was by, you, um, by Money Magazine. Uh, and we are identified as, as a value institution 
for our efforts over these past uh, years uh, with uh, not only increasing retention, which was one of those strategic imperatives in each of the strategic plans since I've been here, from 6 to 10, 10 to 15, and now uh, embraced again in the 16 to 21 strategic plan. Well, but what was great is that we are reducing the achievement gap of, uh, between majority and minority students. And I think that uh, takes extreme uh, effort on everyone's part and one that is showing the benefit because we are establishing relationships with all of our students and they find themselves here as a home for them. And we're, we're making progress, yes, but I know that we can continue to do better. We're, we're making that progress, yes, but we can, uh, in fact, uh, uh, I, I won't be satisfied until that gap is completely gone. So we're, uh, we're, making, and we're making good progress, and uh, we're also uh, recognizing uh, the, the demographic shifts that we have here as well. Uh, and we know that the 18-year-old cohort, as we've been describing in some of the college startup meetings, is uh, being uh, challenged and they're being reduced, and the slope is continuing to erode 18-year-old cohorts here in Michigan. Uh, so again, I'm going to say it here, as I said in the college meeting, we can't rest on our laurels. We cannot uh, be complacent. We have to ensure, double down on uh, ensuring that our students are engaged in relevant and rigorous programs, that these uh, individuals uh, uh, know that uh, this institution is interested in their success. And I think that's, that's critical. Another indication of our success in serving uh, the student population is uh, one that received uh, by Access Improver by the Institute of Higher Education Policy. And to quote them, quote, we have found that your institution, Grand Valley, not only enrolls Pell students over its predicted rate, but has also experienced an increase in the Pell enrollments over the past five years that exceeds the national average, unquote. It's phenomenal to get that type of, uh, of uh, recognition across the national stage. And I'm also pleased to report to you that our culture is evolving to meet the needs of an increasingly diverse student population and faculty staff within our community. We're meeting the needs of all of our students, but it helps with retention again. Uh, we had our fifth annual climate assessment and had the highest response rate in our history and really much higher uh, average than the university's Jesse and uh, uh, others uh, are to be congratulated with that. But we have room to grow. We have seen improvements, yes, but we still have room to grow in creating uh, the culture that we want here and the climate that we want here so that all of us can succeed. And so the improvements that we have to make are in the perception of fairness and equity in hiring and promotion and, and the overall diversity in our communities. I've said this time and again and again, it's worth repeating. I define diversity as an intellectual asset. It is an intellectual asset for a university like Grand Valley because that will enable us to succeed. And that's why this president is going to continue to uh, uh, ensure that we are creating this environment then for all of us to succeed. And another challenge that I want to put out, I, I not only want to meet our compliance standards in all the segments of our community so everyone feels welcome, I want to exceed them. We've got to do better than just the standards in this regard, and that'll help us succeed. Let me uh, shift a little bit and just uh, share that uh, students and, and alumni, and Marsha and I went on this 10-city uh, tour uh, this uh, past year, and it was great to uh, bounce around uh, uh, from Seattle to New York to Houston, uh, all uh, uh, Chris Barbie and, and uh, and others in, uh, in Karen Lowe's area had me and Marcia on the go. And uh, I really appreciated Marcia's uh, efforts in that regard. But what we heard time and again and again was that this place called Grand Valley State University is created and sustained on relationships between the student and the faculty member or the staff member or the coach, 
or maybe others in the community who took time through an internship or co-op program, experiential learning. That is what we, hear, we heard time and again. It was great that no matter where these individuals were, and then we also heard it when we went uh, overseas, uh, Mark uh, Schaub, uh, make sure that Marsh and I get to uh, visit with uh, universities who have served our students, or in turn, we're, we get students from them. So we visited with alumni uh, in China, for instance, and we heard the same thing. This place we call Grand Valley State University is created because of the relationships that we have with our students and faculty. And we do have some of the best staff supporting our great faculty and in turn then our students. And uh, let me, uh, and I, I do know, I'm going to share this with you. Our faculty, uh, I could have uh, another two and a half hours in sharing all the good things that our faculty have done through this past year and, and the awards and recognitions that they have. But one in particular I need to share with you because I was there with his uh, uh, family. And when Matt Balkins was named Michigan Professor of the Year, I was so proud. And uh, Gail uh, for, and Mark mentioned, Mark Schaub, uh, we have uh, engaged uh, with a project with internationalization on the campus, and uh, we have created a new uh, award uh, who makes significant contributions to advanced global learning. And uh, it really is uh, fitting within our strategic plan that we are highlighting that. These global competencies that we have are so critical to our students' success. And I want to recognize James Good. Uh, Professor of History is the first one to receive this award because he's going to set the standard. And I, I'm pleased uh, with uh, what he has done in the founding of the Middle East Studies uh, Program, his leadership in hosting Model Arab League on the campus, con and really contributing uh, to the uh, richness of our learning environment. So if you see Jim, say thanks. And again, these two individuals are just so, one of so many who deserve uh, similar recognitions and all that. Um, well, again, a little bit of a shift. Well, while we continue uh, to help the students uh, stay in Grand Valley, we're helping them succeed. You heard that term time and again and again, uh, and, and we are. 94% of our recent uh, graduates are employed or going to grad school. Phenomenal, 4% increase year over year, okay? Uh, I don't think many institutions across Michigan or around the nation can, can uh, uh, demonstrate that. And 85% of those that are working are working right here in Michigan. That's a good return on investment for the taxpayer dollars, even though it's not as much as we want or should have, but that's a story for Matt to worry about. But the uh, essence of uh, why I wanted to share those uh, two statistics with you, and Karen Loth is quick to point out when she's talking to foundation members and others, we are a talent engine. And I think that uh, understanding that uh, we're in the human capital development business, uh, if you want to look at it that, we're, we are a higher educational institution uh, involved with liberal arts education within the professions, but it's talent at the end of the day. And so I'm, I'm pleased with uh, those efforts. And helping students succeed is also helping them with their life skills. Uh, in the classroom, outside the classroom, um, one program that particularly caught my attention was the one in financial literacy, Money Smart Lakers. And more than 2,800 students uh, have benefited from this type of peer mentoring. And also our students uh, this year will benefit from our investments in the learning environment uh, with housing, with recreation, uh, with the performing arts that is going on right now, the reason why we're here. Uh, and so my, my many thanks uh, are going out to those in our facilities who keep this place looking as good and functional as it is, and they do it so efficiently with the dollar. So if you see James, or if you see anyone on the campus today or through this week, and let's do it for the whole year, say thanks.
Without this learning environment, we couldn't attract, we couldn't retain, and we could not help our students succeed. And I, and I wanted to call out one other area that's uh, close to my heart as a student athlete way back when, and then a coach a little bit along the way. Um, Laker athletics is another factor in our success. And I, I don't think we should take that for granted. It takes a lot of work. It's a focus on uh, competitive excellence that I hear time and again. And um, our programs across the entire spectrum and our coaching staffs and those that support them has demonstrated this time and again, now with our 11th Director's Cup. That's the All Sports Trophy. Now, let me put it into context. We're about 55, 56 years old. Uh, we are number three in the nation in terms of total Director's Cups. Uh, Williams College, they've been around a long time. And Stanford, they've been around even longer. And us, the new kid on the block. That's competitive excellence. And what's the beauty of this is our students across the entire campus and our alumni across the world note this. We're investing well in that type of student success. And it can be seen on the fields or in the courts or in the pools. Okay, it, it's, it's phenomenal. So I just wanted to uh, uh, just call out that part of our enterprise called uh, Grand Valley State University, and last night we were, uh, at least I was taking some uh, selfies with uh, students when the entire new class with the GVSU and the band was there and the football team was there and the women's soccer team, phenomenal uh, uh, programs uh, in their own right and others are contributing. I went to the uh, uh, volleyball practice the other day. They work hard time and again, but they represent the best of us and in turn it's recognized by all those other groups faculty, staff, and students, and alumni, and others in our, our community. And it is really wonderful to see the sustained excellence that we see in that program. And it really is embodied in all that we do here at Grand Valley State University. Well, we also have to note that uh, we have a particular responsibility within our communities as well. And we're connecting uh, with our West Michigan community in many, many ways. Uh, in 2016, uh, I need to highlight this one because it's uh, one that I really appreciate. Uh, PBS, uh, WGVU, and the Grand Valley State University Colleges of Education Classroom Partnership. Uh, WGVU was uh, selected uh, by PBS to be the flagship station to roll out this initiative to help our students in the K through 12 community succeed. And I know that. Uh, our model here in West Michigan is the model now that's been used across the nation with PBS. And so we're leading the pack again, making those connections with our community. One of the highlights uh, to me and a lot of hard work going uh, forward was uh, with regards to community relations activities. We had a large team of uh, folks from legal affairs and finance and administration, and the secret ingredient was Pat Waring out of my office. Uh, this team worked closely with the city of Grand Rapids, and I'm glad to see our former mayor here, who's now our, our colleague. Remember, we, we work together on this uh, so that we can find uh, the common ground, that we can uh, be mutually supportive of one another, and uh, our neighbors uh, in Belknap as well. So we created two uh, MOUs, and uh, we have developed a clear pathway which is mutually supportive of our our needs uh, to create the quality of life uh, for all of us here in Grand Rapids. And it also provides a pathway for our needs in the health professions and health sciences and nursing who will receive the care that's going to come out of some of these investments that we're going to be making there. And Pat, you did a heck of a job. And our community and alumni continue to support us. I, I was uh, so pleased to hear this, that uh, last year, and it's not a comprehensive campaign year. We'll get to that in another minute or two. Right, Karen? But uh, just last year, uh, through the efforts of, uh, of Karen Loth and her team with Scott Blinkhorn, and Dan Hurwitz, and Jen Wardrobe, and the rest of them in the development, uh, they reported $13.3 million of investment in Grand Valley State University with over 15,000 donors just in 
last year alone. That, that's uh, pr pretty remarkable because I think I'm going to uh, go aside on this. What the, the donors and slash investors are saying in us is a great return and a great future for this uh, space and place called West Michigan. And they're investing in us. And in turn, we have to fulfill our promises then in that talent pipeline and other ways as well. And so much of this good work is uh, moving us forward. Uh, we have momentum, but some of the work is uh, moving forward even without uh, fanfare, so to speak. So let me uh, wrap up uh, this portion uh, with uh, a couple of things. One, University of Communications uh, has received more than two dozen peer-reviewed public relations awards this year. It's a, it, it's a record number, and we're an envy uh, to other universities here in the nation. Inclusion and Equity created a social justice education unit that will involve faculty members and will engage employers, employees and students in, in terms of a deeper understanding of social justice. And in fact, uh, I'll put this out there too. Uh, when I was in Connecticut, I was uh, provost, and, uh, but I was engaged in the community in New London, and I always uh, talked about that economic development and social justice are on the same coin. And I think you cannot have one without the other. And so when we can take uh, our mission that way and help our community succeed, it helps all of us succeed as well. So I appreciated uh, the efforts that uh, Jesse and others have in that regard. And um, we, we mentioned some transitions before. Uh, uh, Gail's office, the provost's office, had significant changes this year uh, with uh, new members uh, joining her leadership team to help us move forward with uh, fresh new perspectives as well. So thank you. Okay, now back to the Laker effect. And um, well, let me uh, share with this. The Laker effect was a collaborative uh, between um, university relations with uh, uh, Rhonda Lovert's uh, development and enrollment. So it's uh, one of those uh, uh, very much, uh, I would call it interdisciplinary in an administrative sense. And we, we wanted to make a statement of our values in terms of uh, something that uh, could uh, translate uh, very nicely into media, maybe a uh, meteorological uh, uh, metaphor. And as a Coast Guard guy, I love it, okay? Uh, whenever you talk about weather, I'm all in. <laughs> and especially lake effect. You know, you know I, I just think that's fantastic. But it really does uh, really resonate uh, with us. It's a really a clever way to uh, uh, use that, that term. Um, but one of the things that uh, one needs to understand is that the Laker effect is founded on the uh, 16 to 21 strategic plan. They took the plan, we lined it up with uh, integrative marketing and some of the other uh, research uh, needs that, that we would have. And really it specifies and through the um, notion of Laker effect, our values as an institution. And it, it fits different audiences as well. It could be those that are going to be attracted here through admissions. I think that makes good sense. It could be those that the want to invest in us it makes good sense. It uh, puts us out there with a distinguishing mantra uh, for uh, marketing. And all that uh, fitting in nicely in this integrative uh, way. So we, we're, we're fundamentally focusing in on the, on the values of uh, liberal education uh, along with the professions. And that model, uh, when I was here, uh, 10 years ago, and I shared that, that it was a distinctive characteristic uh, for me to understand this university. And it continues to transcend year over year over year. And it, it calls us, and this Laker effect really calls us to kind of, kind of reach. And that's uh, what we're going to be doing now over these next uh, four or five years in a comprehensive campaign uh, to reach. And some of the areas that uh, we're going to uh, as uh, Karen was pointing out, we're going to take it up a notch, so to speak. And all of us on the president's uh, cabinet and the, the board uh, has uh, been made aware of some of these efforts as well as we move forward. But uh, we, we want to double down on experiential learning. Uh, I think that uh, critically important to find the relevance of what you're doing in the classroom or in the laboratory uh, right there with experiential learning. Uh, I drive that towards competencies. And uh, if you want to distinguish a graduate, 
It's, uh, it's the competencies that he or she has when they go into the next phase of their development, whether it be as a graduate student or into their career. I hear time and again and again from employees, excuse me, employers of our students, they have the ability to work hard. They have these other competencies of critical thinking. Uh, they, and I hear again, they can work hard. And then they have the ability to communicate. And then they can work hard. And it, it, it's remarkable. You hear it, Matt. We, all of us on the president's cabinet as well. The faculty and staff has ingrained that into our students to help them succeed while they're here. And they're taking it out and demonstrating it day in and day out. Interactive teaching. Uh, it's, it's so important for us to ensure that uh, uh, technology, because it's a pathway to the rest of the world, is used. And we're, we're using a number of different ways to do that. We'll continue uh, to evolve uh, and using the technology for that outreach. Uh, not just in hybrid uh, courses, but maybe, maybe other ways too. But uh, the technology is uh, part of the DNA of a millennial. And it's important for us to understand that. We're going to take that within our Laker effect. Global competencies, I've said that uh, before. It's so important uh, for our students and their success. Inclusion is part of the mix. Enrollment development is part of the mix. And then, of course, retention and student success. It's focusing in on our students. Well, the Laker effect is really this, uh, what I call, collective impact on the world as well as us right here in the Grand Valley family. It's, it's, a, it's about our West Michigan roots and our passion for learning, and, our, and it's our creative spark. It's what we do in the classroom. It's what we do outside the classroom when we in, interact with those relationships we have with, with our students. It's about caring. It's about caring for one another. It's about caring for our students. It's about caring for our discipline. I'm a chemist, I'm very proud of my uh, uh, continued uh, passion to get into the classroom. I love teaching freshman chemistry. It's that caring, though, for our students that can be translated in all that we do in and outside the classroom. And with that caring, we're serving our community as well. And we are, in fact, uh, through that, a collective force for very, very good for our world. Well, I see this uh, Laker effect in what I call three waves or circles. I like the waves uh, uh, as a Coast Guard guy. The first uh, wave are current students. Uh, they're just exploring their way uh, that they will have their impact on the world. Um, our, our students that are coming in the, in, the, in the first year, uh, well, number one, they're getting a lot younger. <laughs> and uh, they, they're here ready to go. And a lot of them with some nervousness, yes, but we have upper class students and transition students and RAs helping them as mentors along the way because they have uh, really brought into their own DNA the values of Grand Valley State University, what we're all about. And with our help, collective help, in and outside the classroom and what we do in terms of uh, staff support and all, uh, we can inspire them to serve and to lead and make a difference. And the second wave are alumni. Now just about 105,000 of them, according to Chris Barbie's latest count. And they're performing their professions already. Uh, I, I get uh, uh, this 10 city tour. We were able to see uh, some of our alumni at Microsoft, or those that are in the health professions, those that are in marketing, those that are teaching, those that are in engineers. You name the profession, they're using their abilities and their success that they had here in those professions and making a difference. And actually, uh, uh, there's a, a number of them as well, which I'm very proud to uh, share with you. Many of them in the not-for-profit, not-for-profit world as well. And they're leading away, leading away with uh, business and government in so many different ways. And they're going to be paying it forward for the next generation. We've seen uh, uh, increases in the giving rates uh, with our alumni. Uh, we have a long way to go. Karen knows that. Um, and so we, we will, in fact, do that. Uh, we, we have to encourage paying it forward. So, uh, Victor, you know, that, that's what we have to do together. 
Uh, the third wave is our community. And our family is growing here at Grand Valley State University. But uh, everywhere you go, though, uh, with, especially here in West Michigan, uh, you know, we, we might have uh, 40, 50,000, maybe 60,000 of our alums in this tri-county, this West Michigan uh, um, metro, metro area. And uh, they're making a difference as well. Uh, they, they're creating this own network, so to speak. And we saw this network when we did that 10 city tour across the, across the nation. There was a challenge I gave to them. I'm not here to ask you for money. I'm here to ask you that there's 10 more people. We might have, say, 100 people at, the, at a uh, gathering. I wanted them to go out within their community where they're living and connect with 10 more people. It was called the power of 10. And that's what they were doing. And that's what we have to do in terms of this network. That, that's part of that Laker effect. And uh, I can see it's going to uh, make our waves uh, just expand and expand over the years and decades ahead. So I mentioned before, too, that uh, our strategic plan uh, has some uh, important stretch goals for us. I'd like you to take a look at we We're going to refresh this plan year over year over year. We're going to have a good... Uh, uh, what I call mid-period scrub point, because in 18, probably the middle of the fall of 18, we have our accreditation visit, and already uh, we're ramping up uh, that uh, process. We have uh, Megan Saul, part of it, from the board, uh, and in terms of strategic plan, Mary Kramer is part of that mix, so we engage the uh, uh, board members along with uh, um, many, many others, uh, faculty, and staff, and students, and alumni, and others, uh, to uh, ensure that a strategic plan is relevant for the future as well. But there's some uh, stretch goals in there, and it, I said it's a way to achieve our margin of excellence. Um, but some of these stretch goals uh, come at a cost that I, I want to uh, minimize the impact on our students. Uh, we, we hear about debt, we hear about costs of, of uh, attendance and all that, so I'm, I'm going to use the developmental uh, folks and myself and others, uh, hopefully in this room and well beyond, uh, that uh, we, uh, we, we need to ensure that we do everything as cost effectively as we can and then seek out new revenues as well. I mentioned $13 million and 15,000 uh, folks for just last year. That's part of that, that Laker effect. But we, we will, in fact, uh, kind of quietly uh, but with a crescendo, uh, start our comprehensive campaign. Remember the last time I, I, uh, I was bold uh, uh, 10 years ago, I said, well, let's go 50 for 50 years of service, and a couple of the board members says, are you crazy? I said, no, we can do it. And then the recession hit, because we were going to go from 7 uh, to uh, uh, 2010 to celebrate 50 years. Well, at the end of that, we had 98 million. That's called a Laker effect in many regards. And was it 17,000 uh, 17, plus people contributed just to that, that particular campaign? Well, we have to do it again, in my mind, uh, because change around us is really relentless. And so we have to continue to stay on that curve, ahead of that curve, ahead of that wave, so to speak, and be mindful of those challenges ahead. As I mentioned a few of those early on in my comments with you. So in order to help us meet uh, these challenges, uh, we're going to look forward uh, uh, to an effort uh, to increase uh, donor funding, uh, investments funding uh, to Grand Valley State University. And uh, we're going to look at three areas. And you'll hear more about this as time goes on. Uh, first off is opportunity. That's a good bucket to have. It's funding for more students to come to Grand Valley and to keep them here as well. And through scholarships and all, uh, it's all about access and affordability. And um, uh, Chick and Michelle and others uh, uh, love it when we uh, uh, bring another scholarship with Briette, who, who's uh, just a remarkable uh, leader in that, in that space as well. Uh, achievement is the next bucket, so to speak. And it's funding. Um, our programs to help us retain students. Uh, so we have to have student success programming. Uh, I love uh, what we do in leadership development. Uh, service and leadership 
is a distinguishing characteristic of our graduates. They're going to take that into their, their communities. But leadership development is, is so critically important. And again, I'm going to uh, share again my passion for experiential learning, whether it be internships or co-ops or clinicals or teacher ed, uh, you name it, we have to make those connections. Troy Farley does a great job. I think when I started 10 years ago, we might have had, I don't know, three or 4,000. Now this past year, we had 8,000 plus. We, we can have to continue to ramp that up because it's the investment of some of our business community and others uh, in the not-for-profit and from the, in the governmental sense, too, making a difference in those experiential learning opportunities. And it keeps our talent here. And finally, uh, relevance is the third of those particular buckets. Uh, we have to have uh, funding to maintain uh, our relevance to our students and through our understanding of employer demand. And we're going to do that uh, with creating the environment for our students to succeed. So we'll, we will look at uh, uh, capital project like expanding our health campus in, in Grand Rapids, uh, our academic uh, programs and centers, and endowed uh, faculty positions as well. That all helps us maintain relevance. So I've given uh, Karen some uh, hefty goals here. Um, and I know that uh, they're not going to do it alone. Um, we're going to do this uh, together as a university. We have a great foundation. And uh, our foundation are individuals who can also help open doors for us, and we're going to ask them to do that. Um, so it, we, we're not going to do this alone. We're going to demonstrate uh, all three of those particular waves uh, to see if we can get others on board and expand the participatory rate, expand that base of people who want to invest in a great institution who has momentum going forward, who are making a difference in our local regions and for the rest of our state and the rest of our nation. And this is uh, going to all happen between now and 2020. We'll, we'll scrub it up in 2021. And uh, again, very much aligned with our strategic planning uh, efforts. They're going to closely be hand in glove as we move forward. And so this campaign itself uh, over these next years is going to be one of my uh, priorities. Uh, I mentioned that to, uh, to the staff. And, uh, but in essence, it's all of our jobs. And the reason why I say it's all of our jobs is because what you do in the classroom, what we do in supporting the classroom and outside the classroom, all of us with staff, it's helping us fulfill our promises to our mission. And that's what the donors and the investors want to know. Are we, in fact, giving them a good return on what we do in and outside the classroom and what we're doing for our community? So let me uh, finish up. Of course, uh, uh, we can always say that you know, we know our mission of educating students uh, for their lives, professions, and society. But I'm going to take it a little bit different in that um, Educating our students and helping them succeed is a noble work of all of us. Uh, we touch the future. When, when I go into the classroom uh, and uh, engage with a uh, freshman chemistry lecture on molecular models, or when a coach is out there uh, exploring uh, uh, some of the new uh, drills, or someone in performance uh, in clarinet, uh, helping that individual, or someone uh, singing, or someone's going out there with a poster session as an undergraduate, an individual in a graduate program uh, going out and really understanding how he or she is going to make a difference in someone's life as a PA or PT. All that comes together because of faculty and staff understanding the noble work that we have together, creating that future, that future state with great optimism. I mentioned about these students coming in uh, yesterday. Uh, and. I can say the same thing about students uh, when we had 5,500 walk across the stage in April. The sense of optimism I have month after month is just uh, a remarkable part of, of uh, being an educator. Being a president, yes, but being an educator. And all of us in this room, whether you be in a classroom or not, whether you be in the financial aid office or in business, whether you be an individual who's uh, helping us maintain this great institution right here in our environment, wherever we are, downtown, here, it, it, is, uh, it is noble work. And we're all doing it together. We all have that mission. We're shaping student lives 
it's really great. So uh, I'm going to uh, finish up, and then I think we have maybe a minute or two or three for any questions that you might have. But um, the former ambassador um, and President Mills College, Barbara White, said this, the basic purpose of a liberal education is to liberate the human being to experience his or her potential in the, few, in the fullest. To experience his or her potential to the fullest. Well, we are unleashing human potential every day we come to work here at Grand Valley State University. And as Henry Adams reminded us, to teach is a way to change eternity. That's that noble work piece coming through time and again. And our students are learning from you day in and day out. They're looking at you as role models. Whether you be uh, uh, teaching a class in business or helping our students uh, through uh, our dining facilities because they're helping someone build a taco. All of that contributes. They're watching us. We're mentors to them. Isn't it great? Don't you feel it? I surely do. It really is. We're changing eternity. So as we head uh, into this next uh, academic year, uh, it's exciting, it's meaningful, and I, I think embracing again our mission to shape students and help them succeed. In fact, um, I have a, a little bit different uh, uh, mantra. I'm gonna use this uh, that I uh, shared with uh, some folks recently. You know what Grand Valley is? The best place for student success. Let's say, that's easy. Can you remember that? Let's say it together. The best place for student success. Ready, one, two, three. That's what it's about, that's what it's about. So I would uh, encourage you now to uh, figure out what your Laker effect would be. We all have the opportunity to make this year even better. And how can you help make sure that our momentum continues to go forward on a very positive trajectory? So I'm going to uh, uh, stop there. We have a few minutes uh, for uh, one or two or three questions and I'll wrap up for one more comment, please. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for your opening and guiding comments, President Haas. I appreciate that. My question, teacher pay penalties are at an all-time high with new research from the Economic Policy Institute suggesting that a teacher will take an immediate 17% penalty on earnings just by deciding to teach. It's more important than ever that we encourage our best educators to enter the field. What is Grand Valley's mission on elevating the status of educators and making sure that we have the very best and brightest teaching our students? Okay, I'm gonna ask Ricky to repeat that because I, gotta, I have a, a um, so my hearing aid broke on Tuesday. <laughs> so I can hear low voices, but I can't hear, I can't hear Marsha and she's frustrated. <laughs> Well, it's true. Okay, go ahead. If okay, can summarize. What is GVSU's vision on elevating the status of educators and making sure that we have the best and brightest teaching our students? All right, come here. <laughs> okay, it's a specific question regarding uh, uh, teacher education going in? Yeah, you know, it, it's uh, really quite unfortunate because um, I have seen a, and a, a quick story. I was playing golf and I shared this with the College of Ed too, with a friend of mine whose daughter is now going to senior year, wanted to be a teacher for her entire life, first two and a half years here. She wanted to be a teacher. Now she's in marketing. And what I see uh, that uh, in some regards, uh, in many regards actually, that the profession of, of uh, education, and especially in the K through 12, uh, has uh, been denigrated in some regard, to be very honest with you. And it's unfortunate because we need the best in those uh, classrooms to help our students achieve, whether it be pre-K, K through 12, and, and, and the like. Uh, Marsha's an educator. Uh, she got in the classroom early on, teaching at, uh, at the middle school in Port Huron, Michigan. 
Uh, so, yeah, it, we, we really do. And uh, just to let you know, you may or may not know, but the governor a few uh, months ago asked me to chair a commission uh, called P20. Uh, it's a commission on developing a framework uh, for, uh, for education across all the spectrums, P through careers. And so I'm going to have my third meeting. He gave us a uh, uh, deadline of February, and we're going to work diligently. There's 25 members of the commission across uh, different sectors, uh, education and business, and a couple of people from um, uh, legislative uh, folks. And it's a very, very good group of, uh, of uh, people who are passionate about uh, the profession. And of course, uh, focusing in on K through 12 is uh, going to be there. So I, I agree. It's uh, really un unfortunate in terms of uh, what we're doing. And hopefully, if we can create a framework, uh, because we haven't really looked at this type of, of um, system for about 50 years, actually. And, and the dynamics have changed dramatically, especially those who are entering our classrooms. So it's a great question and one that uh, we do have to double down on. And, uh, 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 the folks in our College of Ed uh, are, are feeling that, that pressure, too. So uh, together we have to come uh, to ensure that all of us are successful here as well. And then it's a value proposition that we, we can change that, I think. I, I know we can, and I'm hopefully bring that uh, together. So thank you for, for that. Perfect. One more question? Morning, Chuck. Good morning. Good morning, President Haas. How are you today? Uh, thank you for your th thank you for your remarks. Uh, you began uh, by congratulating Jim Bachmeyer and Scott Richardson on their new assignments uh, as uh, AVPs, and I wonder whether you could uh, share with us uh, additional details about some of the strategic initiatives that Jim is going to be working on in his new role. Okay, want to repeat that, please, and I'll try again. Yeah, can you elaborate on some of the strategic initiatives that Jim Bachmeyer will be working on in his new role? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I've already seen Jim working on some uh, projects that overlap uh, with uh, the academic division. So uh, it's the strategic uh, imperatives, and Jim has a, a, a great uh, uh, skill set to help us uh, drill down, uh, whether it be in terms of uh, uh, providing the right environment or looking at the right uh, type of uh, needs we have, uh, financially speaking. And he and uh, Scott and others are going to be working together, but without a doubt. So, thank you. Okay, let me uh, uh, wrap up. Uh, if there's any other questions uh, that you have of me, uh, Ra Rachel uh, monitors the President's account. I do answer emails. Please do. Okay. Um, so let me uh, finish off uh, this way, and it's uh, one of those things that I, I needed to say today. And uh, that is, um, we, we are living in a world uh, that's impacted by people who want to disrupt our world. And we can sense that. In fact, I was uh, so relieved uh, that our 14 students and two faculty members uh, uh, returned safely from France, because they were there within a block of those horrific uh, circumstances there in France, in Nice. It happens, though, uh, not that long ago, you may remember that there was an incident uh, in Washington, D.C. at the Navy Yard, where a gentleman uh, uh, decided to disrupt uh, there, you would think, in a very secure environment. I share that because it's close to home because my brother, my daughter-in-law, and my son, excuse me, my brother, son-in-law, and daughter worked across the street from the cafeteria where they went to have lunch day in and day out. They weren't there right th then because they brought lunch from home. So all this is part of that, that I talk about that family. The family you have close and the family you have as uh, students and faculty and staff as well. But we do live in this really world that uh, is wanting to be disrupted. But I mentioned one of the uh, imperatives, we still have to make sure that the world is open to our students and they in turn coming here as well. 
And so we're going to continue to do that, but we're also going to learn from our students and others uh, year in and year out on how we can make sure that uh, we have the right uh, protocols in place to ensure the safety of all that are uh, experiencing some very positive ways of, uh, of global learning. And we also know the tenor of the debate in a political sense uh, uh, going forward uh, over these next months, I'm sure. Um, I'm not going to get into any politic. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but just the, uh, the, the tenor of the debate there and really in, in involving the social fabric of our nation is there as well. And to come back to us as Grand Valley, founded on liberal arts principles, founded on the, uh, the ability that we have to engage in civil discourse. You know, the work out of the Hallenstein Center and, and other efforts in terms of common ground and, and the like, that's who we are. This is our values. And uh, we uh, can, in fact, and should involve ourselves in, in learning from one another and having the ability to engage in that civil discourse. And we will continue to learn from one another. And we will do that in a way that uh, will lead us to be better individuals and a better institution. And, and therefore, as, as uh, we see this ripple effect in the Laker effect, we can see this happen as well. But one of the things that we always have to remind ourselves is to be respectful of all. Civil discourse, respectful of all. I'm going to resonate with that same message with our new incoming Lakers for a Lifetime here shortly. So now on to convocation, and then to the official opening of the Holton Hooker Learning and Living Center. And thank you again for all that you're doing and contributing to our Laker effect. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.